Welcome to Chickenlandia. Hello. Welcome to Chickenlandia and welcome to Bok Talk, your 100% friendly backyard chickens show. Thank you so much for being here today, guys. Uh, welcome to the people in the chat that are joining me live on YouTube today. And welcome to everybody who is listening to the podcast. Thank you so much for following along on this crazy chicken adventure. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about how to tame a chicken. Now, this is a question that I get a lot. I get <laughs> messages about it. Uh, I get comments about it all the time. So we're just gonna we're just gonna put it all out there today and talk about it. I also want to talk a little bit about something that we touched on uh, in, in our last Bok Talk, and that is water belly in chickens. And if you don't know what that is, stay tuned and you'll find out. <laughs> so um, if you have a question that you would like to submit for me to answer on Bok Talk, then you can do that by going to my website, welcome to chickenlandia.com. Go to the contact section, and then there's a little scroll down menu, and it says, ask a chicken question, and click on that, submit your question. If it's relevant, I will answer it. I try to get back to people if I can. I do get a lot of questions, so I can't get back to everybody, but um, I love hearing from you guys, and I love featuring your questions on my show, so definitely check that out, and if you've got a question, submit it. I just want to say hi to some of the people here in the chat. Princess and Flower is here. Hello, Chicken Man Harry. Hello again. Heather is home. Frostfang9. I'm going to mispronounce your, your name. Akua Blue. Hello. <laughs> Saffron Moon is here. Brilliant Creatures. Nicole B. Kiss My Grass is here again. Thank you so much for being here. And Pamela Benet. Alyssa Ann is here. Hi from Alaska. Wow. And Miss Mintz, good afternoon to you as well. So I don't know if I'm going to have a moderator today. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you this. Please behave yourself in the chat. <laughs> and let me know if there's somebody that is disturbing that is disturbing our peace, our, our chicken zen here on Bok Talk. let me know and I will try to get to it. The chat goes by pretty fast. I'm talking a lot. So hopefully one of my trusty moderators will come in soon. Everybody's busy. It's the summer. People are out doing what people do in the summer, but they're, they're also practicing social distancing. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> Lisa Lee, good to see you here. Jacqueline Valdez, thank you for being here. So um, I have a couple of announcements I want to make today. The first one is a really fun announcement. There is a new Facebook group. It is called Everything Backyard Chicken. And I'm telling you about it because it's hosted by a company that I am an ambassador for called my favorite chicken. And I'm very involved in this group. Um, I'm there a lot answering questions. I do post my videos in that group. It's a really nice group because um, it's very low on chicken drama. And <laughs> we know that, that the chicken drama is high. It is. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but it is. And um, in a lot of Facebook groups, I've seen you know, it can just get out of control, but I really feel good about the people that are running the group. Um, it's the people from my favorite chicken, they're very professional, kind people. So I trust that they're going to keep a great environment, um, especially for beginners. So if you get a chance, go and check that out. It's called Everything Backyard Chicken. You'll love it. It's a great community. And I see Green Dream Project has joined me. Thank goodness. Now we have a moderator. <laughs> Watch out, trolls. If you haven't uh, checked out Green Dream Project, they've got an amazing channel. They're out in the middle of the desert, off-grid, doing all kinds of amazing things, things that you would never catch me doing. 
Um, but they're out there doing it, being sustainable, teaching other people. And they have something really exciting coming up on their channel. It's a, a summit that's going to be featuring a lot of incredible um, people in the sustainability field. And I'm one of those people. So um, definitely go check out their channel, follow them along and I believe, I don't know what the date for the summit is, uh, Green Dream Project, if you can post that uh, when it's going to start, but it's in August and it should be a lot of fun and a lot of information. So just want to plug that. Um, so my other announcement that I'm going to make right now is that Bok Talk, the podcast and the live show is going to go on hiatus on hiatus, not hunt. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm going to start that over for the podcast. <laughs> Bok Talk, the podcast and the live show is going to be on hiatus for the month of August. So I think this is the last, yeah, this is the last uh, Monday of July that I would be having this show. So August I'm not going to be doing my live show. I'm not going to be posting the podcasts because I not only do I need to take a break. Um, it's been a very, very active chicken season. Very active. Lots of new people getting chickens. Um, my business has grown substantially in the last six months. It's been it's been a wild ride. And we know that everything is wild right now. So <laughs> So uh, the chicken, the chicken game is strong right now. Um, so I need to take a little bit of a breather and spend some time with my family. But I also have some projects that I'm working on that I really just need to focus on. So I'm going to take uh, August off. And then in September, boom, back with a bang. Okay, so stay tuned. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please do that. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Yes. <laughs> and um, I'll be keeping people updated. So, and you know, I mean, you're always welcome in Chickenlandia. So definitely come and check me out in my other places. Oh, Chicken Man Harry says, there goes my Monday evening. Oh. You can go and watch my videos, Chicken Man. <laughs> Ozark Mountain Goats, thank you for being here. Suburban Homestead, WY, thank you for being here. Uh, let's see. So somebody said, why? And when I said I was going on hiatus. Um, yeah, I just need to, uh, I need to get the, I need to get the ducks in a row. And um I've got some exciting things that I'm working on and I just need to have some time to focus on that. But there are so many videos. I mean, uh, I've been on YouTube for over two years. There's a lot of informative videos. You guys can always send me a message. I'm around. I'm just not going to do Bok Talk for about a month. Okay. <laughs> so hopefully you will, you will, stay here and be here when I get back with a bang. So, oh, and you know, I was talking about the group, the new Facebook group. I'm going to post that link in the description to the Facebook group. And I'll also put it in the podcast show notes. Um, and I'll also put a link to my favorite chicken in there too. So you can check them out. So let's talk about how to tame a chicken. <laughs> Like I said, I get so many questions about this. Um, you know, people see my chickens. They see me holding my chickens in the thumbnail. And um, I do have some, some chickens that are very tolerant. I wouldn't say that they're super tame. Uh, Kiki is probably my tamest chicken. And she tolerates me. <laughs> I pick her up a lot and I carry her around a lot. She wasn't like that when I first got her. Um, but just picking her up and carrying her and feeding her treats has helped a lot. But I, I want to just um, first read a question that I got from one of our viewers and listeners. And then we'll go from there and give you some ideas. So this is from Cynthia Kelly. 
She says, your chickens seem so friendly and they enjoy you holding them. And, and that, that is the uh, miracle of editing. <laughs> My girls, I can't get any love. Oh. Even with daily treats. When they are little, it's pretty good. But then once they go into the coop, it's chase and tackle. <laughs> Maybe that's your problem. I'm so sad. The only chicken I had that was super cuddly was my baby rooster, Heppy, a silky mix that I had to rehome to a friend because I can't have roosters in the city. Bummer. How can I have cuddly chickens? I must be doing something wrong. So first of all, you're not doing anything wrong. We, we know that for sure. You're not doing anything wrong. Um, there's a lot of factors in, involved. One of the main factors would be what breed of chicken you have. Um, and then there's also like, when did you get your chickens? It sounds like you had them from babies and how you're handling them. So this, this is probably too late for you, Cynthia, but you know, in case you want to get more chickens, <laughs> um, I'll let you know about this. Uh, Choose easy breeds that are known for tameness. Now, um, I have a video. It's called Best Chicken Breeds for New Chicken Keepers. And I'm going to post that in the description and in the show notes. And in that video, I talk about um, layer breeds that are known for being calm, for being tame, um, for being good layers, for being generally more quiet. Now, these are all like generalizations because it really depends on the individual chicken. Um, but in general, the chicken breeds that I'm talking about in that video, they're, they're more tame usually than many other breeds. There's also some bantam breeds that are generally more friendly. Of course, silkies are super popular for being friendly. Um, bantam Cochins, same. Pekins in the UK, um, and then Saramas are, are very friendly. Uh, usually they can still be crazy. Like <laughs> they can st still be super skittish. I also had an old English. She was the tamest chicken I ever had. Her name was Pip. She would come, she would get mad. Like if I didn't cuddle her and she would come up and I would, I could pet her forever. She would fall asleep. She was just so sweet. Of course she was taken from me too early because the friendly ones that you love the most are the, the ones that get taken. So, um, yeah, that happened. That was not fun, but, uh, it really depends on the individual bird, even like super flighty birds, like let's say leghorns. Um, you could have one that's very, very friendly. Um, it just, it just depends. But the birds that I mentioned in that video, and I think, let's see, it's Black Australorp. Oh, gosh, I can't even remember. Bard Rock. Buff Orpington. And what's the last one? Americana. Uh, or not Americana, Easter Egger. Um, those are the birds that I mentioned in that video. So in general, those are going to be really easy beginner birds that are, will generally be more friendly and tame than your other breeds. Um, so obviously if you get them as young chicks, you will have more of a chance for them to be friendly and cuddly. Um, you want to handle them respectfully. So especially if you have little kids, make sure that you're observing your kids with the chickens or with the chicks and that they're not doing things that are going to make the chickens afraid of you in the future. Um, you want to talk to them a lot. You want to move slowly when you're with them. And a good thing to do when you have baby chicks is to get either their feed or you can get um, some treats like mealworms or maybe some crumbled up hard boiled uh, egg and put it in your hand and then put your hand in the brooder and leave your hand in the brooder for a long time they might be too scared to come up to it. <laughs> and then there's usually one chick that's like, you know, I'm going to go check that out. And it, it only takes one They'll come up and peck. And then 
the others, you know, then it'll be like, oh my gosh, this is delicious. Like I just found the gold mine and then the others will, will catch on. So, um, definitely like get them used to your presence, get them used to your hands, uh, pick them up, but also give them breaks. Um, and then it's a great idea, and I teach this in my classes, if you can get a container that's kind of noisy when you shake it, like, I I don't really see these very often anymore, but, like, everybody used to have, like, the instant coffee cans, <laughs> and, and it had, like, the plastic lid, and you could put something in that and shake it, and it would be really loud. Um, now we drink fancy coffee, so <laughs> we don't have that. Um, but if you can get something like that, like a plastic container with a lid, put some uh, mealworms or some grubs in it or whatever uh, treats that you have that that would be louder when you shake it and then shake it every time before you give it to them. And it's kind of like Pavlov's chicken. Um, they hear this noise and they know that that means, oh, we're going to get a treat and they will come to you. And before you know it, you have them following you around. You can use that to get them to do things. Like if you want to get them into the coop at night and it's not quite dusk yet, but you want them to go in there, shake that can, they hear it, they come running and then you throw the treats into the coop and get them to go up in there. And they, they seem to fall for it every time. <laughs> um, if you, if you have older chickens and I have this a lot because my chickens, most of, most all of them are rescues. So I don't really get them as chicks. Um, I will, you know, I have a chair out in the chicken yard and I will go out there and just sit in the chair for periods of time. And I will usually bring treats with me. You, you see, there's a theme, you know, there's a treat theme. <laughs> it's like, it is the way to a chicken's heart is through food. Uh, and mine too. <laughs> So uh, maybe that's why I, I relate with chickens so much. <laughs> so, um, you know, have treats with you. Give them treats from your chair. You can even like sprinkle treats on your lap if you want them to come up. And they're more likely to kind of come to you. You really need to like make it to where they want to come to you and they don't feel like they're being chased by you. Um, and if you need to get a chicken that is really skittish, I would wait until they are on the roost at night and then pluck them off the roost. Um, so then they're not as traumatized um, uh, with the chase and tackle <laughs> thing. Um, just be consistent, you know, and understand that they might never be as affectionate as you see other chickens you know, it just, it really depends on the individual chicken, but they do love you. And, um, they, they're not always like a cat and a dog. Some of them are, <laughs> some of them are like dogs for sure. Um, but they have their funny little personalities and, it, you know, we can grow to love that. And then, you know, get yourself some silkies <laughs> and they'll be, they'll be the, uh, your lap chickens. Usually sometimes silkies are, are skittish too. I actually, you know, right now I'm kind of in the same boat where it's like, I don't have a super cuddly chicken. I've got Kiki with, and I told you she, she tolerates me. Um, I really wanted to get a, some silkies this year. Um, you know, like I said, usually I try to keep room open for, rescues, but I lost a lot of chickens and, or, you know, in the last two years, I've lost a lot of old, old chickens. And so that's hard. And I was going to treat myself to some silkies this year, but I assumed because I have so many super old chickens that I was going to like, you know, that some of them were, were going to go over the rainbow bridge and they didn't, they're still kicking. <laughs> so here I am with no silkies. <laughs> No silkies. So um, kiss my grass acres. I'm going to answer this uh, last question and then I'm going to open it up for questions in the chat. So if you can just um, hold on to your questions until I open it up, uh, then I can see your question and it's best to post your question in all caps so I can see it, especially today since um, 
I only have one moderator. Oh, and he just, Green Dream just posted my TED talk. I dream of chickens. Yes, I do dream of chickens. So I want to talk about um, a condition called water belly. It's also, it's, uh, that is another term for, it's uh, called ascites, which literally means fluid in, in the belly, um, excess fluid um, in the abdomen. So if you have a chicken that has this, you will see them gurgling. They will be listless. Um, they will be pale, lethargic. And then you will notice that their belly is descended. Uh, distend Am I saying that right? Distended. <laughs> These live shows. Goodness. <laughs> distended. Someone get a dictionary <laughs> for me because the brain, the brain isn't working. Um, and it'll feel kind of like soft and, and like almost like, you know, like a, like a balloon that's full of water. Um, it is not a, it's not a good thing. If you observe that in your chickens, you are, you are embarking on a, a healing journey that uh, may never end um, with that particular chicken. So, but it can be treated. There are people that will, you know, their chickens have a good quality of life. It just is a lot of upkeep if your chicken ends up with this and you decide to treat it. Um, it happens a lot in meat birds just because of the way, the fast way that they develop. Um, and it has to do with actually lack of oxygen, like in inadequate oxygen. Um, it happens for obvious reasons more in higher elevations, but it also happens in the winter. And the reason for that is because in the winter, you're at more risk of having uh, not adequate ventilation in the coop and a, an accumulation of ammonia in the coop. And those things together are not good and can create a situation where your chickens are not getting, they don't have adequate airflow in their coop. They're not getting adequate oxygen. So um, I am always, always talking about ventilation. <laughs> Uh, I do have a video and I will post that in the description and I will also uh, post it in the show notes. Uh, I think it's just called chicken coop ventilation. Um, and in it, I talk about really the danger of not having good airflow in your coop. And I think what happens is, is that especially in the winter, a lot of people are like, um, oh, Gossmania Homestead said distended. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What would I do without you guys? Um, you know, in the winter, people are like, oh, my chickens are cold. So I need to close up all the crevices and make sure that the cold isn't getting in. And that is certainly like a natural instinct that people have. But it is really not what you need to do. Your enemy in the winter is moisture. So you want to keep the moisture from accumulating in your coop that will keep ammonia down. That will keep a, a dry environment in your in your coop where, uh, you know, there's good airflow, and also they're not as in uh, as much of a danger of getting um, frostbite and other respiratory illnesses. So, as as counterintuitive as it is in the winter, a very important thing is for you to have good ventilation in your coop. And just make sure that they're not getting a draft right where they're roosting, but you, you just really want them to be getting good fresh air into their coop and, and you want there to be good airflow. So, um, I would recommend watching that uh, video that I have about ventilation just to make sure that you have, um, adequate air supply in your coop. And that would prevent things like water belly from developing and also other, lots of other problems like uh, respiratory illnesses for sure. Um, of course, you want to have good cleaning practices. You want your coop to be clean. You don't want it to be sterile. Um, so even if you're doing deep litter, you can certainly keep ammonia down. I mean, I've done deep litter before and did not have a problem with ammonia. If you, if you have a good deep litter system going, 
then you shouldn't have to worry about anything like that. And, and also if you have good um, ventilation. Um, and then also, you know, you want to keep dust down and I, I don't have it right now, but I used to keep like a, a duster in my coop to kind of just keep that dust down. Um, and then a really big one is to make sure that your chickens aren't overcrowded. So my, my general rule of thumb is two, at least two to square feet per standard size chicken inside the coop. Now, if you, you can get away with two square feet inside the coop, if you have other areas outside of the coop where your chickens can get, get out of the elements if there's bad weather for a period of time. So, um, for instance, in my chicken yard, I have the coop. And then I also have a run, like within the run, that has a roof over it. And so they can go in that too. And they can also go under the coop. And then there's like a big bush that they can go under too. So there's lots of areas that they, that they can go into when it's snowing or when it's raining really bad or when it's really hot and they need shade that isn't their coop. So I could get away with less space in their coop, but they have, they have lots of space in their coop. Um, if they don't have areas outside the coop where they can get out of the elements, then I definitely recommend having at least four square feet of space inside the coop. Um, and then, of course, you want to make sure that their food and water is fresh and it doesn't have mold or other toxins developing in it. And that's just general, like, good chicken keeping husbandry that you want to stay on top of. Um, nutritional prevention of something like water belly. I did see, and I, I had talked to my co-producer on this and she did some research on it too. And one of the things that we saw um, a lot was the use of oregano oil. And I know that's really popular right now as far as like boosting a chicken's immune system. Um, we couldn't find any actual studies on it. So I can't really, you know, make a definitive claim about that that's something that you would really need to do some research on um, and make, make a decision about what you feel comfortable with. And then, but we did find a study about vitamin C being used with broiler chickens to prevent them from getting water belly. And um, that one was interesting. It, it is for broiler chickens, but I'm just going to put that link in the description and in the show notes for you. So overall, you know, it's just like the common things make sure they've got good food, make sure they have enough space, make sure that they can breathe well, that they have good ventilation, good air quality. And I think with that, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be golden. And, you know, as far as like, if you have it in your flock and you're concerned about other chickens getting it, I might use, um, like an herbal immune boosting supplement. Um, I use one, I have used one called Cluck and Good Herbs, and that's from Scratch and Peck Feeds. And that's just like a general immune boosting supplement. Um, and I also, this year, I grew my own herbs. So I am in the process now of drying some aromatic herbs, and then I'll be drying some medicinal herbs for them too. And you can just, you know, crumble those up and put those in their feed, mix it up in their feed. Um, if you do find that you have a chicken, Oh, and I do have a video about that. I'll post that in the description and the show notes. Lots, lots of things posted in the show notes today. <laughs> um, if you find that you do have a chicken with a, you know, with a swollen belly full of liquid, I, that is really something that a veterinarian, you need to work with, you know, with a veterinarian. Um, it's, a, it's very serious at that point. And usually the, you know, what I've seen as far as long-term treatment, it involves drain, you know, really staying on top of it, draining the belly, um, you know, on a, on a regular basis and also having some type of pain, um, regulation, you know, treatment for them. So it's, it's not, it's not a great thing to have to deal with. I commend the people that deal with it. I, I know people that deal with it and they just love their chicken and they will do whatever it takes to make sure that their chicken is, is well. So, um, I commend them and, and I hope that this is helpful. 
Um, I, I know we had a lot of people come into the chat while I was talking there for like 20 minutes straight. <laughs> Six Hand Spice World is here. Nicole B. Tracy Eldon Smith. Gossmania. Wiccan Chickens. Kaylee Hart. Oh, Kaylee asked, where do you get items for your chicken first aid kits? You know what? I am going to be talking about that very soon. Um, there is a super nifty one that is just all put together on my favorite chickens website. And that link is going to be in the description and in the show notes. They, they just have like a... Um, a chicken first aid kit and it's really cute and it's got a, a, it's got a lot of good stuff in it. So that's a, a good place for you to start. And then soon I will be doing a video about that. Henry Bresick is here. Lots and lots of people here. Cheeto productions. All right, guys. So um, that's it for the questions that I received um, actually, the water belly question was from the last Bok Talk. I believe Lydia asked that question. And um, the other question I answered. So I'm going to open up the chat. If you have a question, if you can put it in all caps for me to find it, then it'll be easier. And I'm going to be answering questions for a few minutes here before we sign off. Kiss My Grass Acre says, our chickens are 12 weeks old. Is it too early to give them crushed, or crushed oyster shell? Yes. Uh, wait until they're 20 weeks. Kiss My Grass. Um, that's when they need the extra calcium. Um, you know, it's for laying hands and they're not quite old enough to have that yet. Henry Bresick asks, what can be given to boost energy or activity have one that's a bit slow moving. Um, so if they are moving slow, I would definitely keep an eye on that chicken because uh, chickens are, you know, they're, they're spry. They're really spry. I mean, they're just always, even when they're standing still, it's like, <laughs> they're, they're always kind of moving, you know, and there's a lot of pecking and scratching going on. So, and certainly if you walk up to it, it'll be like, whoa, you know, and, and, and run away from you or whatever. Um, so if you see that it is listless, it's just kind of standing there, staring off into space. Um, it's moving a little bit slower. Maybe it's not eating as much. That is an indicator that there might be something going on. So um, I would definitely keep an eye on that chicken. One thing that you can do just in general that will, you know, for supportive care is to add some vitamins, electrolyte, probiotic, uh, a, a vitamin, electrolyte, probiotic supplement to their water. And I wouldn't do that indefinitely, but you could do it for one or two weeks um, just to give them a little bit of a boost and then keep your eye on that chicken. Um, I like to use a supplement that I get from Henny and Rue. I think it's called like three in one electrolytes or something. Um, but you can go to your farm store. They will definitely have something like that. Um, and then if they really start to slow down and you notice like, hmm, something's, something's not right. I use a method called REST. And it's an acronym. The uh, R is remove your chicken from the flock. The, okay, go, wait, okay, yes. <laughs> I get this right. <laughs> I created it. I get to forget it if I want to. <laughs> uh, the E is for electrolytes. So give them a, a, an electrolyte vitamin, probiotic boost. The S is for scrambled egg. Usually when I have a chicken that is, that's not feeling well, I will try to tempt it with some scrambled egg just to get some nutrition into it. And then the T is temperature control. So um, if it's cold, you want to bring the chicken inside where they don't have to like be working at trying to stay warm. If it's super hot, you want to bring the chicken inside and make sure that they don't have to, you know, be trying to cool off all the time. So um, generally any sick chicken should be removed from the flock so that you can not only observe that chicken, but also get any, 
you know, lessen the, the chance that you can infect other chickens um, with whatever it has. And then also a sick chicken in your flock is very vulnerable to being attacked by its flock mates. And we don't want that. So um, that's what I do, would do. Just keep an eye on that chick chicken, um, Henry, and uh, keep me updated. Eric Johnson, my trusty moderator, thank you so much for being here. Yes, we are still live. And, <laughs> and the temperature up here is about 82 today. Miss Mints, when can I tell if my she is actually a he? You know, it depends on the breed. If if you, I mean, I think what's hard is when they have the, the small combs, like when they have a little pea comb or a rose comb, it's harder to tell. Um, and you may have to wait until you hear the, the crow and then, you, or you see an egg. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Easter eggers are hard to tell. Silkies are notoriously hard to tell. Polish, definitely really hard to tell. But usually by about four weeks, if you have a, a um, little roo in your flock, you will see more of a red comb, more red wattles and face. Um, and then you will begin to see, uh, you know, more pointed saddle and hackle feathers. And it, it depends on the breed when you will be able to tell, but that that's generally a good way to, you know, a good thing to keep an eye on to see whether or not you have a rooster in your flock. Um, if you, you definitely want to choose when you're going to get baby chicks, you want to choose chickens that have been sexed. If it says, if you're, if you're at the farm store and you see a barrel of cute, adorable baby chicks and you want to reach in and get some, but it says straight run and you live in the city. Don't, don't get those <laughs> because you might get a rooster. And in fact, you're almost guaranteed to get one. Um, and even chickens that have been sexed, there's always a chance that you could get a rooster, but definitely just keep an eye out. Really what I've seen the most is the redness compared to its flock mates. You'll see the redness, big legs, um, and pointy hackle and sab saddle feathers. Some people are like, oh, you know, this chicken, it seems more aggressive than the others. It must be a rooster, but that's, that's, uh, not, uh, that's not a, I'm sorry, I'm reading the comment. <laughs> that's not, um, always a good indicator. Brilliant creature says, is an electric fence the only thing to deter bears? Gosh, I don't even know if an electric fence would be, uh, you know, no, there's really, bears are hard. Bears are really hard. And um, I confess, I don't deal with them up here. Um, I think your best bet with bears is to make sure that feed is put away because bears would be coming more for the little treats that get left around that, that chickens eat. But, you know, even the Fort Knox of chicken coops, uh, bears can rip through a lot of things. They can literally pick up coops and shake them. Um, but I think uh, if you make sure to uh, make, you know, keep the feed in a different area, I would keep it like in a very secure area if I had bears around, like in a, in your garage or something. Um I think that's your best bet. If there's anybody in the chat that deals with bears, let me know your ideas. Chicken man, Harry says, I've got a hen sitting on six fertile eggs. So excited for her to hatch chicks. That is exciting. Joyce Hanks asked, my chickens just started to lay. The eggs are small. Will they get larger? Yes, they will. They should get larger unless it's a tiny chicken. <laughs> but yeah, they, you know, when they start a lot of times, hold on, I need to get a drink. When they're just getting started, sometimes um, their eggs will be really small or sometimes they'll even lay an egg 
you know, without a shell, there, that's when you'll see some abnormalities. But if it's not an ongoing thing, I wouldn't worry about it. And yes, they will definitely start to lay larger eggs as they get older. Akua Blue says, when should I bathe my chicks? They are about three weeks old. And how should I dry them? I would not bathe them unless they were dirty and really needed to be bathed, especially at that age. Um, they've got, they've got a, a high chance of getting chilled at that age. Um, so you want to be really careful about actually immersing them in water. Um, what I would do at, a, at age three weeks is give them a little dust bath. And what you can do is get a little dish, even just like a pie dish or maybe like a casserole dish. Fill it up with some dirt you know, some real dry dirt or sand and they will get in it and give themselves a little dust bath. Cause that's how chickens clean themselves. They, they, they do the dust bath thing. That's how they keep mites and lice at bay. So it's good. They, they instinctively know to do it. It's adorable to see them do it. And that's what I would suggest at this age, um, rather than giving them a, a full on bath. So guys, um, we have been on for 41 minutes. You know, I like to keep it short and sweet in Chickenlandia. I thank you all so much for joining me on this ride. Um, it's been one heck of a chicken season and, um, I've gotten to know a, a lot of you really well. I've talked to many of you on email, um, you know, on the chats and, it's been great. And, and many of you comment on my videos and I, I just love that. And, um, you know, I am taking this little break, but don't worry, I am coming back. And when I get back, it's going to be better than ever. So just hang in there. Um, watch all my old videos <laughs> and, and listen to all my old podcasts. <laughs> and that will hold you over until I'm back in September. So I just want to take a moment to thank my co-producer, Kelly, uh, Kelsey Paulus. Uh, she is a behind the scenes person in Chickenlandia. And she really helps me a lot with research and just taking, you know, staying on top of things. Um, and also my podcast editors at Talking to Crows. They are awesome over there. Thank you so much uh, for your contribution to the Chickenlandia team. Guys, remember that you are always welcome in Chickenlandia. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you very soon. Bye.